Welcome to this edition of Pre-Internet Plane Spotting, brought to you by Jetflix. Hi there, my name is Henry Tenby. Welcome to this edition of Pre-Internet Plane Spotting. In this edition, we go back to the summer of 1972 to the New York City airports of LaGuardia and JFK. Back then, German aviation slide photographer Gert Killian was visiting these airports taking slides, and I've used his slides in this show. You're going to see the interesting aircraft that would typically be seen at these New York City airports back in the summer of 1972. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. I'm also a collector of 35 millimeter color slides of aircraft. If you have an aircraft slide collection that you'd like to dispose of or sell or get rid of, I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to contact me at my email address, which is shown on the screen. That's henrytenby at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you about your slide collection. Welcome to New York's LaGuardia Airport Observation Deck, June 1971. Here we have Mohawk Airlines FH-227 N7816 Mike pulling into position. Most of these aircraft were operating on northeast short-haul regional routes at the time. Mohawk Airlines had a fleet of 23 FH-227s. And here we have Mohawk FH-227 N7822 Mike parked at the gate. We can see a Mohawk BAC-111 as well as United Airlines aircraft also parked at the gate. Notice there was no air bridges at the time, so all the passengers had to deplane and board their aircraft by walking through the gate area down to a ramp, and the open ramp led to the aircraft. So those were the good old days. And it was the following year, 1972, that Mohawk Airlines and Allegheny Mer Airlines merged together to become a single entity under the Allegheny Airlines branding. And here we have an absolutely beautiful shot of Eastern Airlines Lockheed Electra N5517, I believe taken at LaGuardia. Gorgeous sunny side on Kodachrome here. Eastern Airlines operated these aircraft on shuttle flights between New York and Washington, D.C., and it's for sure that this aircraft was operating one such flight. Eastern kept the Electras in service on their shuttle operation up until 1977. And here we have a beautiful view from the observation deck with a National Airlines 727-100 just getting ready to be departed, uh, looking absolutely gorgeous, probably operating a flight down to Miami or Florida. Uh, National Airlines was quite busy on the New York to Florida run uh, during the 1960s and 1970s, so that was a typical service for them. Uh, back in the era. Reg on this aircraft is N4617. I also like to point out in the background the interesting American Airlines 727 Trijets. Notice that some of the aircraft have the new scheme and some have the old 1960s Thunderbolt scheme. So in 1972 you'd had a, you had a nice mixture of schemes to view uh, which made it all the more interesting. Here we have United Airlines 727-100 N7073 uniform viewed from a parking lot at JFK Airport. Of course, the cars in the foreground are equally as interesting as the aircraft, but the United Airplane is in the old Stars and Bars livery, one of my favorite airline liveries uh, from the 1960s and 70s. So here we have Northwest Airlines Boeing 707-351C. N362 US sitting on the ramp at New York's JFK Airport. JFK was a popular spot to see the Northwest 707s as there was always several based there. See another sister ship on the far left-hand corner, the tail is visible. Between the early 60s and about 1978, Northwest Airlines operated a total of 36 different 707 models in their fleet. Here we have Aer Lingus Boeing 707 EIAPG taxiing at New York City's JFK Airport in August of 1972. Aer Lingus was a very large operator and a longtime operator at JFK Airport going back to the propeller days of the 1950s. And by the 1960s and 70s, their 707s were commonplace at JFK. This is a very rare bird. It's Trans International's Boeing 727-100 N1727T taxiing at JFK, 
August 1972, Trans International only had a handful of these. They were largely a DC-8 charter operator, but they did have a couple of these 727s for charter work, and I believe this aircraft was possibly operating charters down to the Caribbean at the time. Here we have a beautiful shot of United Airlines DC-861 N8076 uniform taxiing at JFK Airport. August 1972, United Airlines had a large fleet of these stretch eights and they were acquired predominantly for long haul domestic routes such as US East Coast to West Coast and servicing Honolulu from the US West Coast, notably Los Angeles and San Francisco. By 1984, there were still about 30 of these aircraft still in service with United Airlines. And in the late 80s, they were converted or a large part of the fleet were converted over to DC-871 power. This is United Airlines DC-821 N8004 uniform, which presumably was the fourth DC-8 delivered to the company back in the late 1950s. United Airlines operated these aircraft up until uh, the late 1970s on U.S. domestic routes, as well as the routes to Hawaii, and they are a gorgeous looking aircraft, I must say. And this is sister ship DC-821 N8021 uniform taken a few minutes after the previous slide. So United's DC-8s were very common easy to see in New York uh, in 1972. I guess many of these flights were operating between New York and Chicago. So the aircraft were very, very popular and they're great to see here. This is a nice shot of Eastern Airlines DC-863 N8755. Eastern Airlines had a handful of the stretch DC-8s. Uh, the 63 series that were used primarily on East Coast trunk routes between uh, the Northeast and in Southern Florida, as well as from the Northeast down to San Juan and points in the Caribbean. So these aircraft operated with Eastern Airlines about 1972 or 1973 when they were retired. American Airlines Boeing 707s were very common back in the 1960s and 1970s. They could be seen at most major airports across the United States. Here we have American Airlines 707 N7576A taxiing at New York's JFK Airport, August 1972. Between 1968 and 1977, Seaboard World Airlines operated a fleet of approximately 22 different DC-863s that were used on passenger and freight combi charter services globally. And they were seen quite frequently at New York's airports, including JFK. Uh, this is aircraft N8635 taxiing at JFK in August of 1972, looking absolutely gorgeous. This is Seaboard World Airlines DC-850 N8783 Romeo, seen shortly after it was acquired by the airline in August of 1972. The aircraft remained in service with Seaboard until 1975, and Seaboard operated a dozen DC-850s between the late 1960s and 1977. Here we have Northeast Airlines 727-200 N1640 taken on August the 3rd, 1972 at New York's JFK Airport. The historical importance of this image is that it was taken two days after the official merger between Northeast Airlines and Delta Airlines, which took place on August the 1st of 1972. Soon after the merger, Delta Airlines applied uh, little stickers to the forward section of the aircraft, and that had not taken place on this aircraft when this image was taken. So there you have it, bit of history from August of 1972. Here we have a nice taxing shot of Japan Airlines DC-853 JA8013. The image was taken on August the 3rd, 1972, and seven weeks later, on September the 24th, 1972, this aircraft was written off in Bombay. What happened was the aircraft was operating JAL Flight 472, an international service from Frankfurt to Tokyo, with an en route stop in Rome, 
Beirut, Lebanon, of course, Tehran, Iran, and Bombay. What happened was the crew were cleared for a visual approach to landing on runway 09 at Bombay's airport. And instead of landing at Santa Cruz Bombay Airport, the aircraft touched down on runway 08 at the nearby Juhu Airport. So the crew took it to the wrong airport. Right runway, wrong airport. The length of the runway was only for 1,100 meters, which was insufficient for the aircraft to stop. So it ran through the end of the runway and uh, went into a ditch and a fire broke out and the aircraft was written off. There were no fatalities or injuries, thank goodness, but it just makes this shot all the more interesting given that it was written off a short period after this slide was taken. Between 1960 and 1973, Delta Airlines operated a fleet of 17 different Convair 880 jetliners. Here we have an 8814E taxiing, operating a revenue service on October the 3rd, 1972, seen here at New York's JFK Airport. The Convair 880s of Delta Airlines, as well as those with TWA, were retired in the wake of the Arab oil embargo, which took place in 1973, in the wake of Israel's uh, six-day war, and of course the, the, the Yom Kippur War, which followed in uh, 1973. The Arab countries put the oil embargo in place basically to punish uh, the West, to punish the United States for supporting Israel in the conflict, and it resulted in a drastic increase in fuel prices. That sounds familiar to today, what's happening, of course. And as a result, the inefficient jetliners like the uh, Convair 880s and Convair 990s, which sucked back the gasoline at a ferocious rate, had to be withdrawn from regular airline service. So all the fleets of these aircraft uh, with Delta Airlines and TWA were, were retired. So it's nice to see this aircraft on August the 3rd, 1972 at JFK Airport earning its keep in regular airline service on that day. Here we have a lovely Kodachrome slide of Braniff International Boeing 727-100 C model cart with a cargo door N 7288. This particular aircraft went, entered the Braniff fleet in 1967 until it was sold off to uh, Brazil, uh, Trans Brazil Airlines of Brazil in 1980, but it sure does look good in the two-tone scheme here as it taxes at New York JFK on August the 3rd, 1972. Just beautiful. Here we have Braniff International Boeing 727-200 N413BN in the beautiful blue two-tone scheme. The aircraft remained in service with Braniff International until the company went bankrupt in 1981-82, and the aircraft was then purchased by American Airlines, who operated it until about the year 2002, when it was ultimately scrapped. Those with a keen eye will notice the lineup of Northwest Orient Boeing 707s in the far background by the hangar. At the start of this video, we had a slide of one of these aircraft taken from over the fence view on the other side of the taxiway. So it's interesting to see this perspective from the opposite side of the field. So it, it does evidence that Northwest Airlines did have Boeing 707s uh, in, more, in some quantity based at JFK Airport in 1972, possibly in support, I'm guessing, of the Vietnam uh, era and conflict that was going on at the time. Please take a moment and click and subscribe to our channel. I'm also a collector of 35 millimeter color slides of aircraft. If you have an aircraft slide collection that you'd like to dispose of or sell or get rid of, I'd love to hear from you. Please feel free to contact me at my email address, which is shown on the screen. That's henrytenby at gmail.com. I look forward to hearing from you about your slide collection.